Good morning. The project is going to be cathedral cabinet door, cathedral top meaning kind of the curve here in the top. Now what I ran into a problem with this right away was this bit I had which cuts the top and bottom of the panel, kind of hogs it out. And that is a problem. Here's where it cuts it out. Because the curved top of the cathedral doesn't allow you to set a fence on a router and just slowly move it back and cut a little bit at a time. You would have to cut it all at once on a pin on your router table, which is going to hog out way too much material to be safe. It's going to grab too much wood. You can buy this piece with a progressive bushing right in the middle here that is bigger. You got one bigger one, one smaller one, and switch that out and do it in two passes, but even to me that's just way too much wood for freehand or pin routing on the table without a fence. So I had to change my approach to this and get a panel raising uh, bit here to progressively increase from under the table and cut little pieces at a time, and then a back router, um, which is going to be used for back cutter here to cut, again, progressively rise up out of the table and and cut the back off this raised panel. So that was the first problem and I looked at various options for that and I just couldn't find a good one. Now, the tricky thing about the panels is you've got this inset in the style and that's 3 8 inch. That's pretty standard across the board. All the router bits tend to cut out 3 8 inch. This is a space ball, rubber compressible ball that I'm going to put in here. I've got different measurements, depends on which ones you buy, I guess. They're about a quarter inch, maybe. Um, and then the panel needs to set in here two eighths inch longer. So you want to fill the entire groove here. There won't be any room to expand. And it'll, in, in the summer, it'll, it'll expand too much. The winter will contract too much. So you, you have to have some room for expansion. That's the reason for the space ball. Now I did a full-size mock-up for my door, my cabinet door. I'm making 13 of these. The styles are here on the side, as you can see here. They're generally between two and a quarter and two and a half inches. I'm doing mine two and a half. That's kind of the standard. You don't want them too narrow because then it'd be hard to put hinges on the back. Too wide might look kind of funny. Um, but my doors are kind of funny anyway, so that's just the way I... The, the place, the space I'm putting them in for storage, the, it's only 12 inches top to bottom. Now when I made my panels, right here I had to glue two boards together. I used domino tenons. I made sure I measured along. I had two really long boards, you know, that went all the way along and I side glued those with dominoes between them. I marked where my dominoes are and I measured ahead of time where the panel would be so I made sure I didn't get a tenon too close to this arch because I'm going to be scalloping this out with a router bed and I don't want to run into a tenon that will be showing. So I just did them kind of in the middle too, lined them up, ran them back through the planer, and made it double wide for the for the panel part of the the door here. Now, um, this is a coping slit I got for the uh, rails. Uh, again, the rails are this direction, just terminology, and cope is this joint here. And so this it, router jig is nice because it runs against the router fence higher up. It's not at the bottom. The plastic, you know, most most jigs you build run right along the bottom. They're going to cut into the bit. So this one runs along above the bit. And I've already cut a sample piece of a rail here. There's the rail sample piece. On that, using that jig, it slides in here. It's about $59. I got it from Rockler. Rockler doesn't pay me to do anything. It's got to hold down. you got to adjust, but it'll, it pops on. It holds it tight enough backer board actually screws in. There's two screws on the opposite side that go into this board, so I'm going to have to change that out. I wonder if you can just leave it loose. might be better. I don't know. Rather than screwing in, I'll probably just do that in the future, just leave it loose, because I'll be switching that in and out a lot. So that's the basics for now. Um, the panel, when I was making, I had these templates, and the problem with this is the template doesn't go past the edge, and when you start routing, like the flush routing bit, Along here, you don't want to start right in the wood. You want to have something that, go, that gives you an edge to start the bearing and then go into the wood. So I'm going to have to make my own longer 
um, pieces to route these doors to so it'll go past the edge here. So I can start with the the bit on this edge and then slowly get in to the wood. Now, when you set the if you buy these router templates, you can make your own. Like you could just you know use a compass and do some curves and there's ways to do that online. But the thing you have to be careful is which side you use because these are not exactly parallel or maybe they're parallel but a little one smaller one's bigger. So at the top of the door you actually use the bigger part of this template which is this edge. This is a smaller part. You can see if I put the smaller part on the bigger part here there's this gap here. You want this for the rails because you want it to come down and cover up. So you want this for the panel, the bigger part here. So it overlaps into the groove, and you want this for the top rail to bring it down to cover up so there's that slot in there that it'll fit up into. Now again, the measurements are a little tricky here because um, you got to make sure that you do your panel oversize so it goes into the groove, but not too far oversize where it fits tight and it won't have any room to expand or contract. Other people put a nail here and here in the back to hold the panel in the middle and let it expand in, in and out it won't expand this way of course but I'd still put space balls up here too anyway just to hold it tight so the space balls are to keep it from rattling that's that's why you put these you can buy them really cheap I mean you get a bag of a hundred or a thousand for you know 10 15 bucks whatever and people use uh, throw all kinds of stuff in there pieces of caulk and junk and foam padding and this and that it doesn't matter as long as it keeps it from rattling but I think space balls are they're pretty dense so it takes a lot to compress them and They'll expand back out, so they'll probably last better. But yeah, you got to make sure that you've taken the, the dimensions that this is always three eighths this groove here, and always do some setup blocks like I did. I did style setup blocks. And I ran it. That was the first thing I did was do some setup blocks that I'll be using later in this piece. And I kept. I did the style first when I did the setup, and then I did the rail because I wanted to move it up and down on this sled. The sled adds a little bit of height, so again, I did the styles straight against the router table. But then I I had to adjust this, the bit, up and down. Whoops, I'm sorry, I got the wrong end. Up and down until I got it to fit just right where it's flush here. And you can feel it, that it's flush right here. So. The way I did that is I just kept doing the end and cutting a little bit at a time, cutting a little bit, at a time, cutting a little bit. Now, if you if you did the rail first and then if I fit the style, you'd have to cut the whole edge of the board. You'd be cutting a lot of wood. Here, I just took a miter saw and cut it down each time it wasn't quite right and used it again until I got it right. So I'll use these for setup blocks in the future for my bits, for my uh, rail and style bits here. There is one more little tip. What I did when I cut mine is I made an extra piece here that's just the right length to bring this up to the top of my cabinet door. It's not just leaning at an angle right now, but if you put it flush with the bottom, it brings it right up to the very top edge. That just allowed me to have repeatability when I drew my uh, lines for the bandsaw to cut that out, that I would, could hit, get the same spot every time by, by putting them up on edge and, and then setting the template on top. So I use that board, I'm doing 13. Again, if you're only doing two, maybe you could just measure it off and get it pretty close and it'd probably be okay but for repeatability I'd put an extra block here in the bottom. So I'm getting ready to route the top of the cathedral pan, or I'm sorry, the bandsaw the top form out. I'm going to cut, I drew a line right around the template then I drew a line just freehand above it just I like to cut a little bit outside it and then I'll route down to the edge by using the template as a guide on the router table. The first part is bandsawing. So I just I just uh, went ahead and cut some relief cuts on the top there so when I'm cutting around the curve it'll make it a little easier on the bandsaw. step 
I put some Turner's double stick tape on here. I put this board on the bottom. I'm getting ready to put the template on here to route flush to the ed top edge there. Now to get these straight edges, since the template's short and doesn't go all the way there, I had to run it through the table saw right down to a pencil line there and it's not going to be, there's going to be a little bit I'm sure difference but I'll sand that out make it pretty close. The good news is I've got a little room because this is going to sit inside the uh, rails up here and, and that groove, that 3 8 inch groove so it'll sit inside there so it's not perfect. I mean uh, that edge, yeah actually though will translate come to think about it when you're hogging out the bulk here for the raised panel if I have a little notch here it'll translate down to here and you would see it so I'll make sure it's pretty smooth by sanding it out and getting ready to apply the, I put this extra block again on here just to help me measure the where to set the template in. So I'm going to get a flush trim top bearing bit for the next part. I just realized I need to build another caddy and buy more flush trim top. Most of mine are on the bottom. The ones that are on the top are a little sh are not sh quite that short. They're pretty long. You get a few like these that are maybe a little shorter with a top bearing bit. So I need to build a third caddy. Anyway, I'm going to use that in this piece to write off the template to bring it back to the edge there. It, my wood does stick out a little further. It's probably hard to see here. So that's next. Because my bit wouldn't go deep enough down under the table, the top bearing flush trim bit, I had to build up the table with a little piece of hardy backer board. So I just stuck that on there briefly to build the table up a little higher. If I had a shorter bit, top bearing bit, it would be fine. switched out to an upcut spiral bit. It's only a quarter inch shank. I wish I had a half inch, but uh, the other bit wasn't running true. I noticed it cut into the template a little bit, so the bearing wasn't flush with the cutting edge. It was an off-brand piece. So we'll try this, uh, even though it's only a quarter inch, and getting ready to do my pattern. I've got my uh, cabinet door, and I've got my template, and I'm going to flush trim it now. So basically it had a little trouble starting out. Took a little rough cut at the very beginning there. I'm not quite sure why. I'm not sure if I've got an up cut or down cut spiral. I'm going to check on which one's going to suck it down to the table. Although I didn't feel it lifting off. But I can sand that out. It's just a little minor blemish at the beginning. And the rest of it routed okay. Again, it's uh, sandable. Certainly before I run the next router bit, I want it to be very smooth because it'll show the offset and that'll cut in and it'll the arch there will have little divots if it's not exactly smooth here. So I found out that just one thin piece of Turner's tape uh, seems to hold the template on the cabinet door. These are pretty thick cabinet doors. I did find out however though that the um, the quarter inch shank was causing some problems. I, I went it ended up getting a bit like this half inch shank the bottom bearing and I was able to turn it upside down. I usually like to see my template hit the bearing but I'm able to see well enough where it feeds in and then go by feel and it's working a lot better. It's, it's not skipping around and it's hogging material much better.